Israel on the brink of all-out war. And while President Biden says he supports Israel's right to defend itself amid the daily barrage of, Ham of Hamas rocket attacks, some in his own party are slamming this stance. Squad member Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez tweeting this. By only stepping in to name Hamas's actions, which are condemnable, and refusing to acknowledge the rights of Palestinians, Biden reinforces the false idea that Palestinians instigated this cycle of violence. This is not natural language. It takes a side, the side of occupation, the New York Congresswoman tweeted. Meanwhile, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar is going even further, saying Israeli airstrikes in Gaza amount to an act of terrorism. Morgan, coming to you on this one, uh, there's some context that has been left out of AOC's tweet, and I think it's important to deconstruct what she's tweeted. Uh, the full tweet basically blames Israel for what's going on, saying that they're evicting Palestinians from the Sheikh Jarrah region and that they're engaging in violence at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. But when you really dive into those issues, number one, the eviction involved seven tenants who were not paying their rent. It was a right. court case that, that was in, at work there. And then the violence at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, well, the violence was from a firework launched at Jewish goers to the Western Wall that went to Al-Aqsa Mosque, and the Israeli police went in to stop the flames and stop the rioting. So give us some context from your time at the State Department. Well, I mean, you just hit the nail on the head, uh, Kaylee. That's exactly what happened. And, and, and it's important to note that when you look at what AOC and Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and others are saying, these are the same talking points that Hamas, a terrorist group designated by the State Department, and their sympathizers use. And, and let me just say, let's go on the, let's just say very clearly, Hamas, uh, this terrorist group, and Abbas, the president uh, of the Palestinian Authority, who, by the way, has not held elections for 50 15 years um, and recently canceled the elections, they don't care about the Palestinian people. I mean, I dealt with this quite a bit whenever we were working on uh, uh, Jared Kushner's peace plan um, for, for Israel and the, and the Palestinians. And they didn't want to come to the table. We had a conference in Bahrain where we brought together the Muslim world, Gulf Arabs, uh, to talk about how we could do business in, in the Palestinian territories, how we could give a better life and a better future, uh, education. Um, more business, more trade, more of an economic relationship. Uh, and the Palestinians boycotted that conference. So a boss who has houses around the world, who has tons of money, yet his people starve, he refuses to hold elections, and a Mossad terrorist group do not care about the Palestinian people. So for these congresswomen to try and pretend uh, that they do is, is, is just, it's dishonest. It's an ignorance of what actually goes on the ground. You could ask the leader of any Arab state, especially any Gulf Arab state, who gives money uh, to the Palestinians in aid. They're sick of it, right? They stopped doing it. So let's just be clear what this terrorist organization, Hamas, is doing uh, that these congresswomen are quoting their talking points. They send over long-range rockets, uh, which if the Iron Dome, which President Obama built to give him credit, if the Iron Dome didn't stop uh, these long-range rockets, we'd see 90% more hit rate in Israel. 90%. Can you imagine mm, yeah. what the casualties would be like if that that happened. And Iran, by the way, is directly responsible for this. As we said yesterday on the show, they fund Hamas to the tune of 30 million a month. They provide them with these long-range missiles, uh, rockets, excuse me, and they do this for the purpose of terrorizing Israel. That's the, the people that we're negotiating with that we're discussing giving $90 billion in sanctions relief to go back into the JCPOA. These are the people who are directly responsible for the images that you're seeing on your screen right now. That's exactly right. And President Trump got out of that disastrous deal. Not only that, withdrew money from the Palestinians. And mm -hmm. Brian, that case that I mentioned about the seven tenants that they were protesting over that arguably launched this, according to AOC, that was decided the first decision in the Trump administration, but yet you didn't see any violence like that. Why do you think that was? Well, there's a couple of things. Uh, I think that they really couldn't quite figure out uh, who uh, what President Trump was capable of. That's why those fa fast boat attacks against our, uh, our uh, warships in the Persian Gulf uh, began to cease. And the fact that we killed uh, Soleimani during that time that everyone thought was untouchable, that also sends a message. And if there's any mystery to what Morgan's saying that is 100 percent correct, it was wiped out yesterday when the Palestinians, excuse me, the Hamas uh, agents, higher-ups, 
thanked the Iranians right. for the quality rockets they were able to obtain <laughs> to the tune yeah. of 1,500. The thing that's very concerning to the Israelis above all is the Arab Israelis who are, put, who are taking out uh, renegade attacks. Uh, renegade attacks inside Israel proper, going in and, and killing and stabbing uh, Israelis, and the Israelis are responding back. So there's things beyond Gaza that are causing some strife within Israel. Yes, That's there are indeed. True. And Harris, it, it is absolutely true. And Harris, Ilhan Omar called the actions of Israel terrorism, is what she said. But when you look at what's happening, Israel is hitting Hamas operatives. Uh, but look at what Hamas is doing. They've killed six children in their territory, in Gaza territory, firing rockets from neighborhoods, killing six children, killing a six-year-old yesterday. Who's the terrorist? The person killing terrorists, Israel, or Hamas, who's killing young children? Well, by that example, obviously, Hamas, but we, we don't need that example necessarily. We already know who the terrorists are because terrorists are taking terrorist money. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, they're, they're right. together in all of this. And the one thing that unifies all of them is their hatred of Israel and, and quite frankly, their hatred of us. Uh, and, and they're not shy about it at all. And exactly what Morgan said, this is not about making a better life for the Palestinian people. How could it be? They're willing to kill their own to get it done. And when you're on the ground in Israel and you're there not far from the Gaza Strip, Exactly what Brian said. The goal now is to get inside. When they're hitting those holy sites in Jerusalem this week, that, that isn't about making life better for the Palestinian people. They want the Israelis to fear them. It's their identity yeah. as terrorists. That's their definition. Terror, bring fear. And they don't even get anything out of it necessarily because they're not effective leaders. So it's not like they go back to their people and, and a boss can say, oh, you know, let's uh, do something with taxation and let's build and let's do infrastructure. They're not doing all of that. They're willing to kill anybody to make that thirst come true, that blood thirst come, th come true for them to wipe out Israel. I, I would say this, though, Ilhan Omar, AOC, all of them, specifically Ocasio-Cortez, the congresswoman, who says, President Biden isn't using neutral language. What, by not recognizing the terrorists over our ally Israel? Neutral language. What, what does that even mean, and why is that the goal? We could be on the precipice of war. Don't we want to be on the side with our friend? Who wants to be neutral when you could, when you could save lives for a friend? Right, right, exactly. We want to stand with Israel as President Trump did, Emily. Uh, and he achieved, by standing with Israel, peace through strength. It seems like Biden's accomplished violence through weakness. That's certainly what we're seeing now unfold. And I think it's remarkable and pretty emblematic that, for example, just three days into assuming the presidency, President Trump reached out to Benjamin Netanyahu. They had a warm phone call. He invited him to the White House. It took President Biden almost a month to reach out. And now we have Jen Psaki coming out and saying, well, in the, over the weekend, we've had at least 25 phone calls between the Israelis and Palestinians and other leadership in that area. Well, we still don't have an ambassador to Israel. We still haven't seen a higher level envoy being dispatched to the conflict. And of course, the deputy assistant secretary of state is there, but that's frankly not enough. And in the way of messaging, it's also intriguing given, remember, 1997, then Senator Joe Biden uh, became the ranking member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and he assumed the chairmanship a decade later. He considers himself an expert in the area, and yet when President Trump came on board, he achieved peace there and achieved far more than what Senator Biden has been pushing, or President Biden has been pushing for. And when he was a senator for his 47 years in office, now we see now a resumed commitment to that two-party state, resuming funding to the Palestinians. And we are seeing what happens. We are seeing what happens as a result, which is emboldening Hamas and obviously violence and, and death there. And just final quick point, I think that the, we are seeing also a bipartisan in the Democrat Party disagreement there. So it's not just the squad. We have also um, other representatives that have come forward showing support for the Palestinians. Palestinians, but also other Democrats that are asking for more to be done from President Biden. For example, Congressman Brad Sherman of California. So it's certainly not party lockstep. He needs to do more.